Much love and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community filled with classes for the creative mind. Do something other than doom scrolling on Twitter for the third time in a minute and start putting those creative juices to work. If you're unsure if education after high school is the right decision for you, or maybe you have finished school and think you can branch out into other things, Skillshare has what you need to supply you with additional knowledge along with fellow like-minded creatives. And for this month, I'm recommending illustrating and procreate drawing a shareable time-lapse by Vashti Harrison. I love using my iPad for drawing and I especially love procreate. However, I'm still learning the ropes, trying to get the most out of my time. And Ms. Harrison's class is just what I needed to see possibilities of what I can achieve within the program. But there's also classes for web development, essential tools and writing stories and stuff like animation if you don't feel like you know, blowing thousands of dollars for something you could have easily learned online. And the first 1,000 of my viewers to sign up using my code, some call me Johnny, or my link in the description below, will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Much love to Skillshare for the sponsorship and thank you as always for helping support this channel. Let's continue on with the show. Okay, so it's been a bit, but I think it's time I finally start tackling some more donated games. Sometimes during conventions and all that, I'll receive games of all kinds from generous fans in hopes of just enjoying it or talking about it in some form or fashion in a video. We're going to be doing things a little differently this time though because Here's the thing, beforehand I used to make individual videos for donated games, and while I still like to do that with a couple of exceptions, uh, these also include a bunch of crappy licensed games that the biggest joke among all of them is that I'm actually giving these games the time of the day, and I feel uh, that joke is starting to wear a little thin, but I still want to look at the games, they were donated to me of course, so I want to pay some respect to that, but uh, this is why we're going to be doing things a little differently today, we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of them for today's video, and... <laughs> I just want you to keep this in mind. My patience for these kind of games is paper thin because either A, I want nothing to do with it in the first place, or B, I have no prior knowledge or history of the franchise in question, and that leaves me utterly lost in the shuffle. Now having no prior knowledge or history can have its advantages. It allows me to approach these games with an open mind, see if these games can allure to me or appeal to me as games or are they just quick cash grabs made to bank on the name of the franchise that they're made after? Well, we're gonna find out now, and first up is Looney Tunes Acme Arsenal. Look at this fucking WB Games logo acting like we're about to play a Batman game. It's Looney Tunes, guys, come on. All right, the soundtrack is whimsical. I can only pick between two characters from the start, though, that being Bugs Bunny and Marvin the Martian. I knew I should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. He said the thing. Now you said the thing, but the, the voice acting for the cutscene seems pretty phoned in, though. Thank goodness we were able to steal the secret time machine plans from Dr. Frankenbeans, Marv. I don't know, that, that delivery for me just kind of rakes of indifference there. Wow. Okay, it's a beat-em-up? I only got like one combo, and I can rock a gun, though. I would think Marvin would have a disintegrator beam on standby. You may fire when ready, Grizzly. <laughs> There doesn't seem to be much variety in enemies, it's a lot of the same gray and blue robots with a lot of repeated voice clips. The guys are always saying the same two or three things, the villain especially, I think only shuffles between two clips. But it does function, and <laughs> look at Marvin here jumping around like fucking Yoda from Attack of the Clones, holy shit. Alright, that's funny. Oh, and there it is. Yeah, I, I couldn't even get an hour into this before the game started giving me disc read errors. At first I thought it was the PS2, but jumping ahead here, no other game I'm covering on the PlayStation 2 gave me this sort of issue, so I'm thinking it's the game here. Which is strange, because the disc looks fine. It just refuses to play after random points. So sorry to say, I didn't have the patience to keep trying this. <laughs> Maybe this wasn't so much a donation to me, but a means to get rid of it because of the damaged disc and because GameStop was only offering a dollar for it. So whoever donated this to me, I didn't see a name in the back of the box like I usually put. Uh, I'm sorry this one ended up being a dud. Okay, what next? Oh, I couldn't play as Daffy Duck without the game shit in the bed, so we have Duck Dynasty. How's that for a fucking segue? I have no idea what this is. Like, I know Duck Dynasty was a reality TV show about a family of duck hunters, but the last time I watched anything reality TV based was never. And the color palette of the box art is reminding me so much of those hunting arcade cabinets you find in a freeway diner. Bonus redneck logic uncle C trivia unlock code inside. That was a lot of words I just said, and uh, there's no code in here. So this reality show got a video game tie-in. I think that speaks for itself. The whole thing is framed, I guess, like an episode of the TV series. And folks, the thing with reality TV 
is that it's scripted, despite what the reality in reality TV might imply. So what this means is a shit ton, and I mean a fucking truckload of forced humor, cringe is set to maximum, and there's lots and lots of conversations about banal shit that doesn't mean anything whatsoever. I'd rather get caught playing Honey Pop than Duck Dynasty. Making it more awkward, though, is this stuff. Man, oh man, when you got it, you got it. And let me tell you, I definitely got it. Hey, what you got? Bed bugs? You better watch out. Look, those little suckers are nasty. In Nam, the bed bugs were so bad that you'd wake up on the floor because, hey, they'd toss you off in the middle of the night. Yeah, these conversations, if you could even call them that, are always accompanied by the sweet embrace of nothingness. It just highlights how utterly devoid of life this game's presentation flaunts. One of the few times I wish there was an honest to God laugh track, I shit you not. The game is also nothing to write home about. There's a ton of weight to the character's movement, and though you're not doing much walking or running before reaching your destination, it never feels comfortable. Whoa, I guess I can't veer off the beaten pathway. I get warped back to the starting point. Poor kid can't escape his duck destiny of being in a duck dynasty. It's one part QTE where you press buttons to lure in ducks, it's one part a hunting game where you then shoot those ducks with a gun that basically aims for you, so all you gotta do is aim down sights and the game handles the rest. It's part fishing game, and alright, nothing wrong with fishing. It's part boat simulator, then it's part bad boat simulator, and then it's part truck simulator, where the game has to pause a lot to load in the rest of the environment. These guys really hate beavers though, I don't know much about life in the marshlands and all that, but apparently beavers can fuck over a lot of things so we commit beaver genocide and then fucking nuke their home base with dynamite. God damn! Oh reward, Vietnamese… what now? I've had about enough of that though, so let's see here. Oh, this sort of takes me back. Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. That's the whole title. You gotta say the whole thing when referring to this game. Even Kyle would agree here. So all right, for once, I'm actually not totally unaware of what I'm getting into here. I saw King Kong in theaters when it was released in 2005. I was a fan of Peter Jackson because of Lord of the Rings, so I wanted to see him tackle King Kong, who doesn't love a big monkey. That said, I only saw it that one time, and I remember thinking, man, this movie's long as shit. And by the end credits, I think I had about like, three gallons worth of piss in my bladder. The game is essentially an adaptation of the movie, though it takes some liberties with a couple of characters, mainly the protagonist Jack, who was less of an asshole in this game than he was in the film. Now, we have Carl Denham for that, once again performing by Jack Black. And not for nothing, the voice acting isn't bad, it's perfectly fine. I think they got all the main cast back for this game. Adrian Brody, Jack Black, Naomi Watts, the actual King Kong, it's pretty cool. I wish I could say the same for the visuals altogether because, I mean, just look at the screen, guys. It's brown, gray, and murky as shit. In the mid-2000s, I guess this would be alright, but now it's spoiled gravy, and it makes it so hard to see where you're going. This is the GameCube release, though, so maybe I'd be singing a different tune if I was playing on the Xbox 360 with clear HDMI output. Jack Black's also rocking the penguin's fingers from Batman Returns. What the fuck is going on there? Oh, but you know what? I wouldn't mind seeing Jack Black take on the role of Oswald Cobblepot now that I think about it. <laughs> this gameplay isn't terrible. I was so confused when I loaded up the options, though. I go into them and then I see inventory? No. What? What, what does that mean? Is the game asking if I want an inventory? Well, yeah, of course I do. Why, why wouldn't I? What this actually means is the game properly showing your ammo count on the screen. This game is big on immersion, and by default you're supposed to pay close attention to Jack's callouts in the game to keep track of your limited ammo. Five magazines on backup. So yeah, I can see that being pretty cool, very old school Resident Evil without the dedicated heads up display, but I'd rather the game just tell me my ammo count, at least the game gives you the option. You're in control of Jack for most of the experience, and it's a survival game. You have limited ammo, and Skull Island is running rampant with shit like giant enemy crabs and centipedes, spiders, and dinosaurs who fucking suck. You have to use your surroundings and, let's face it, a bunch of these disposable spears to thwart whatever's in your way. Lots of fire to go around, too. You know what? This ain't bad. It's just... I can't get past these aged graphics, and it rarely gets better. Not to mention, this is the kind of game where a bunch of times you have to look for these brown levers to rotate these brown contraptions by scavenging through brown environments. It's a pain, and poor Hayes here can't take much more of it. Hang in there, Hayes. Your time is almost up anyway. Also, where's the monkey? I'm close to two hours into this game, and I was promised monkey. Oh man, yeah, there we go. Yeah, fuck him up, Kong. Give him that good old titty beat. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. I love fucking with Naomi Watts here. Oh, 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 oh. Where am I going that way? Or am I going this way? 
Or am I going that way? I'm just fucking with you. Oh, it's over. And I'm back to playing as Jack. But I want to go back to playing as the monkey. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Oh, speaking of more adaptations, The Haunted Mansion. That's right. There was a Haunted Mansion movie in the early 2000s, wasn't there? The one with Eddie Murphy, if I remember correctly. Okay, so make that two games where I'm somewhat familiar with the reference. Yeah, I did go and see that movie in theaters once back then. It was a family get-together thing. I don't remember anything about it, though. But luckily, I think this game is based more on the Disneyland attraction than the movie. Danger High Voltage. Oh, wait. The... Go Diego Go developers? Yeah, another Donators Marathon. <laughs> oh, what are the odds? There's no Eddie Murphy here, just this ghostly white dude named Ezekiel who thinks he's taken the job of assistant caretaker for this mansion. Instead, he ends up taking the job as ghostly savior as Madame Leota, no relation to Ray Leota probably, lurking within her crystal ball, explains to Zeke in a frankly overly long intro that I think overloads the player with too much information at once, that a sorcerer named Atticus Thorne has begun corrupting the spirits within the mansion to do his bidding, and that Ezekiel is the only one who can help the benevolent spirits get their mansion back. Isn't this just Luigi's mansion? And... One second. I'll show him who got the best of whom. Why, I'll bet he's up there right now, camping with a shotgun. That's a ghost gun? A spirit gun? How does that work? Guns can die? There's an afterlife for guns? Equipped with a lantern that fucking annihilates spirits with laser beams? Fuck yeah. Ezekiel has to travel through the mansion and collect enough spirits to unlock more parts of the place. It is one part Luigi's mansion, and another part's... Uh, Mario 64, I guess. At least, that's what I thought of when I had to open these doors that required a certain number of MacGuffins. There's even a painting you can find yourself trapped in for a bit. It's not really a platformer, though. It's more about puzzle solving. Yeah, you can zap things all day with your lantern gun. But this game also likes to use the environment in pretty fun and charming ways to challenge you. Like rooms growing large and smaller, finding yourself suddenly trapped in a game of billiards, and you have to goad the pool player into solving the puzzle for you, cleverly using these spiderwebs to fight against these super strong winds. Combat isn't bad, but I don't think it's the game's strongest point. No, the environments are good enough, and the voice acting isn't bad. This was okay, I ended up really liking this one, so uh, thank you, Jeremy. The pause music is also annoyingly catchy. I guess we should keep the Disney vibes going, so what's up next? Meet the Robinsons? Uh, never saw this, so I don't know what to make of any of these characters. Although this dude is voiced by Adam West, and I love that man, rest in peace. You can use this disassembler beam to extract materials from objects and create new upgrades with proper blueprints. Then you can get an electric glove that can shoot shit at other robots. The lock-on though, ooh, you like you can switch between free aim and long distance, but there's a small delay that makes it feel so ungraceful and I feel like I'm fighting with the controls half of the time when I'm under a strict timing puzzle when I'm surrounded by a bunch of robots to fight. This game is sort of a platformer and adventure title all in one. You're exploring all over the place, solving puzzles with certain gadgets. You can't jump on command, it's like 3D Zelda where the kid can only jump off certain ledges and will automatically leap over smaller obstacles. Not the worst thing in the world, but I think a dedicated jump button would have been the better option. This game takes forever to get going though, whatever story it's trying to tell. It starts with a wild goose chase that goes on way longer than it needs to, and then we're suddenly chasing this snively whiplash looking dude through time and space. Okay, time travel can make for an interesting adventure, but I got very bored after only a couple of hours. It probably would have helped if I saw the movie, I didn't, so the gameplay doesn't stimulate me enough to carry it. Also, these screaming dudes in the potted plants didn't need to be a thing. Yeah, that wore out its welcome very fast, and it happens every time you cross this area. Anyway, moving on. Oh, Jesus. Hannah Montana Spotlight World Tour. This wasn't mine. My sister wanted to get rid of it. Sure it was, motherfucker. In all seriousness, I don't give a shit, boy or girl, if you watched Hannah Montana. Who the fuck am I to judge anyway? Have you seen my room? But guess what? I never watched Hannah Montana, so yeah. But it's got a laugh track. Must have been a thing with video game adaptations of Disney sitcoms. Shopping? Oh, yeah. We're hitting every city of this here tour. I love my life. I love your life. I love when my life hangs out with your life. <laughs> oh, no. It's a rhythm game on the Nintendo Wii. The developers being Avalanche is starting to make a lot more sense now. All right, let's do this. Alright, no more Disney games. Time to wrap things up with, uh, I don't know, I shouldn't call DreamWorks Discount Disney. That's too mean-spirited. 
All right, let's talk about B movie the game. No wait, there's there's no the. It, it's just B movie game. Weird. I never got the joke with this movie. I just want to put that out there right now. I've never seen this movie. I just know that it's a subject of a bunch of memes, and I just don't get it. Is it just because it's Jerry Seinfeld voicing a bee? Is it because the human girl wants to fuck said bee? Hey, I'm a fan of a series where a human girl wanted to fuck a hedgehog. Get in line. I know I'm missing the point. But what is that point? Are you fly enough? What, did they run out of bee puns and make up for over half of this game's dialogue? The devs of this are also bee knocks, who I now know from Crash Bandicoot 4, but I bet my ass they were only given this job for the sake of that pun. Graphically though, it isn't bad. Models and animations are solid. They certainly didn't skimp on that. That said, I still didn't spend more than two hours on this. How could I describe B-movie game? It's like, if someone took one of Jerry Seinfeld's comedy routines and made it into a game. And is it also like that for the movie? Just listen to this dialogue. What led you to that first day outside? Well, Jeanette, there comes a time in every bee's life when he has to ask himself what he's made of. Is there something more? So you had an itch? Well, I'm not sure it was an itch exactly. There was definitely some tingling, bordering on a Jones, but a little short of a yen. They're not fake. They're synthetic. What's real is their sparkle. That and the money that you'll still have in your wallet by not shelling out for the real thing. They were developed by NASA for the astronauts' wives. And nobody can tell. I'll bet a jeweler can tell. <laughs> What are you saying? You're a jeweler all of a sudden? <sighs> no, Ken. I'm not saying I'm a jeweler. What am I playing here? I feel there's something very meta about B-movie game as a concept, as a video game. Centering around a character that doesn't want to be part of the daily grind in a game that's nothing but the daily grind. And there's a part of me that wonders if this game is secretly brilliant or is it just so painfully dull that I'm just numb. I am leaning towards painfully dull because holy shit, nothing happens in this game. It's like an episode of Seinfeld. It's a lot of busy work until you unlock the next story chapter. And that takes so long when you get to like chapter three, I just gave up. What do I have to look forward to? More of this? How did you feel when you discovered the humans were stealing our honey? Um, hurt, betrayed, angry, gut punched, nervous, ambivalent, ticked off, peeved, really the gamut. You felt the gamut? A to Z? Well, maybe not Z, at least W. No, no, maybe I should just stick with the movie. I don't know. Oh God, Shark Tale. So I did see this growing up and I didn't like it. It was DreamWorks trying to make their own Finding Nemo with a shit ton of then current pop culture references that only served to date the movie really hard. Very forgettable, not really enjoyable at all. And for me personally, I hated the character designs. You know, having celebrities voicing characters is nothing new, but DreamWorks wanted these guys to also sort of look like they're actors. It's so uncanny. I never liked it. It's ugly. But DreamWorks would get better about this later, but early on, God, get it away from me. Burn it. And now here I am playing the game of a movie I don't like. And it's competent. You know, it functions. You're in control of Oscar as he plays out bits from the movie. It's a weird hodgepodge of Echo the Dolphin and uh, Nights into Dreams. Yeah, there's some collectibles you nab just by straight up paralooping them. Nights is what immediately sprung to mind. It's also a stealth game, and it's also punch out. Why are these games always a bunch of shit thrown together instead of just focusing on one cohesive style? Given that a lot of these games back then were under strict deadlines to coincide with their respective movies, I don't know, that seems like it would have been easier to develop instead of this unfocused dartboard mentality that, again, is competent, but nothing remarkable and incredibly cheap. The soundtrack is fine though. A lot of licensed music, sure, but it's licensed music I can enjoy with some pretty decent remixes. I'd love to share some, but that get this video flagged faster than my desire to leave this game. I was not expecting the best part of this game for me to be these sudden rhythm games though. I love Parappa the Rapper and I love DDR and I played a shitload of Step Mania, so this is right up my alley. So here I am pressing arrows to the tune of MC Hammer's Can't Touch This and Car Wash, but holy f look at this shit. This is only about like 15, 20 minutes into the game and they suddenly throw this shit at you and you're playing the full song Song too. This isn't an abridged cut. It's the full fucking song. And check these step charts. This shit ain't beginner level. I have to ask those that played this game growing up who had like no prior knowledge or history of other rhythm games. Did these catch you off guard when you first got to them? Because I think this is suddenly asking a lot from the player, don't you think? I, whatever. Fuck this game. Fuck Oscar. Fuck it. <laughs>
That just leaves Flushed Away. I only vaguely recall seeing commercials for this movie when it was making the rounds, thinking, oh, is this from the same folks who brought us Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run? Yeah, it's uh, Ardman Studios. In my later years, I've grown to really enjoy British comedy, and if I can compliment Flushed Away for one thing from the start, is that the dialogue, while still a little juvenile a couple of times, the one dude is just straight up playing a racist Chinese stereotype. The dialogue is more endearing than what I was expecting. I don't know the full deal behind Roddy or Rita or the Toad, but I like their characterizations from what I experienced, and no shit, I might just see the movie now after getting a taste of this. It's just too bad the limited production is likely the reason why only certain cutscenes are animated in real time, while others are just unapologetic slideshows. I thought the game was broken for a second because it was a hard shift that I was not expecting. Besides the Haunted Mansion though, this is one I ended up liking, believe it or not. It's still got a couple of uh, licensed game snags, mainly regarding the presentation. Why do these games bank so hard on using promotional images as menu aesthetic? But unlike other games, it generally tends to stick to one type of gameplay style, and here it's an action-adventure platformer. You can jump and climb on a bunch of things, and you can beat up baddies with a stick with a three-hit combo that reminds me a little too much of Sora's 1-2-3 from Kingdom Hearts 1. And enemies tend to get a little ear grating with their limited voice acting and their repeated death puns. I go to the great web in the sky. You hear that every other minute, but it's still better than this shit. And camera control is heavy as fuck, it's my one major gripe with the gameplay. Like, it's slow to start and there's a bit of end lag to it, which can get me in trouble in a hectic moment. Changing the Y axis to invert it also inverts the X axis of the crossbow controls on the boat. What the fuck was that about? But you have infinite lives, checkpoints are super generous, so even in a more challenging sequence, you never lose too much progress. And like I said, the dialogue is pretty funny. I think I'm gonna come back to this one because full transparency, this was the last game I recorded in the block and I was getting some major burnout, especially after I lost about a day's worth of recordings because of faulty tech. I had to play B-movie game Shark Tale Duck Dynasty more than once and it wasn't any less boring the second time. But yeah, Flushed Away is not at all bad. It's a solid game, so I think that's Arum. I can't read my own fucking handwriting. Thank you. But personally speaking, I'm always gonna be grateful for the donations, guys, I really am. But games like these, I always held in super low regard because it's it's a matter of irrelevancy. Like no one's talking about these games nowadays. They are products of their time. They were made to cash in on their then current relevancy and then they just fade away into the river of time. And this sort of leads me into a second issue where say if there is like a diamond in the rough with one of these, like with, with like flushed away, if I wanna recommend it to you, the best I can say afterwards is good luck because games like these don't get re-released and uh, maybe I'm wrong if they do, if I, I, know, I don't know anything about it, but I generally games like these do not see a second release. They're, they're just one and done, that's it. So when I recommend a game, I hope you can find it. Maybe you can find it cheap on Amazon or eBay, whatever works, or maybe you can emulate it. I guess with some, you can argue it's worth looking at them for their historical significance, if any. But I know most of the time, that's not why people donate licensed games to me. They want me to meme on it, and sure, but I also like to value my time and yours. I don't want to spend eight to 10 hours on Shark Tale when I already know exactly what I'm gonna say about it just 10 minutes in, and I'm not playing more than an hour. A fucking duck dynasty. But it's not just licensed games that I get, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I get as well. So next time, I'm gonna reach into that black box and pull something out and see what we're gonna look at. As always, thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night and take care.